Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Javi Lee. I'm going to show you my Tacoma Overland build on a budget. Everything here is aiming for budget friendly and DIY friendly, which makes it much cheaper for all of us. I'm going to do 52 videos and 52 weeks of tutorials, camping, off-road, the whole shebang. So if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we've got future videos of a DIY snorkel, air compressor install, dual battery system, fridge, and this video, the in-cab battery, which is one of my favorite mods I've done. So, I hope you enjoy. All right guys, voiceover Javi here to run you through this quickly. You're gonna fold the seat down, pop these two covers off the back. These require a 14 millimeter bolt on each side to pop your seat off. Take those out and then you can remove your seat and give you lots of access to remove this back panel. Next, you're gonna remove the three 10 millimeter bolts on the back plastic panel. Remove those and it should lift right out just like this, easy peasy. Next, we're gonna remove this trim piece here to access the back panel holes, but first you have to remove the foot plate on your door. Just pull up on a corner, it will pop out. It won't break, just pull it out. Then you can wiggle this out. It's gonna be difficult because it always is. Don't worry about it, just pull that sucker out. Now here's a hole in the back wall where I run my solar wires through. You should have a little rubber grommet that you can pull out and replace it with one of these waterproof glands. Link will be in the description. The cable comes right out the back half between the cab and the bed and you can reach it pretty easily from underneath. So it's a nice convenient location. Here we have a 14 inch wide by six and a quarter inch tall piece of plywood with two uh, aluminum pieces of metal that I bent as a bracket. Next up we have our fuse block along with our Renogy Wanderer solar charge controller that is 15 amps and our battery monitor which is all meant for lithium because that's what we're using here. Now with the power of editing we have it all mounted to our board which is going to go straight into the back of the truck. So excuse the footage I'm literally holding the phone in my mouth to record this first person. Uh, we're going to use the 10 millimeter bolts from our seat to mount it into the truck. This can be trial and error with finding the right location and getting the bend right on your brackets, but go ahead and cinch it down. It will stay tight. It's been there for a year and a half. It's not leaving. Next up, we want to take the positive terminal on our solar charge controller for the battery and connect that to our fuse panel with a 15 amp fuse. Our Renogy's Raider 15 amps. We're going to use 15 amps. Next, we're just going to hook the negative up right there on the Renogy and connect that to the negative side of our fuse panel. Now take the positive of your battery monitor, hook that to the 5 amp fuse on your fuse panel. After that you're going to take your ground from your battery monitor to the ground of your fuse block which will be grounded to your truck. Now we're going to take the positive wire that's going to go to our battery and hook that to the positive top notch of our fuse panel, that is the source. So we just tighten that down. Next up is the ground that will connect to the bottom of the fuse panel which will go to the ground of our truck. Alright, well you're ready to mount a battery? Let's do it! So first you're going to take this bolt out here and you're going to put a D-ring in its place just like this. Cinch it up with the velcro straps, make sure it's nice and tight. You want it facing the direction I have it in this clip so everything fits perfectly. Now shifting the other side, you want to use the 10 millimeter bolt from your seat back, put it in just like this. Perfect. Now we're going to move the battery and oh it doesn't fit. Take your battery back out. Switch your D-ring around, you want to flip it the other way just like this that way you have the access for this lithium battery go ahead and stick it back in it'll fit nice and snug you can fit a battery with about these dimensions below but you will need to move your tie down point over to the right and then your ground to the next hole over like in this picture below to accommodate the bigger size if you need it use these velcro straps do one over the top run it through the loop ring it back over itself and strap it down then you're going to want to do one across the front make sure that one is nice and tight now it's time to ground the truck so we're going to use the hole that was right next to your d ring you want to clean up the bare metal this is the fastest way this is not the right hole that i'm doing this on but don't worry i did it on the right hole so you want to take a bolt and a nut and run it through here and then tighten this down i'm using some pliers in the back to hold it tight while I tighten it down with my screwdriver. And of course I left these two cables in the way so you're going to have to take my word for it on how I did it. Now we want to take the battery negative from our battery monitor and hook that directly into the battery. It's pretty simple. Recommend you do the ground first before you do the positive that way you're not working with live power. So make sure you get it nice and tight. 
battery negative to battery negative. It helps if you use black and red cables to help you identify it. Then we're going to hook up our positive wire from the top of our fuse block that is just hanging down. That's going to go directly to our battery positive. Next but not least, you want to take the negative from your solar panel, wire that into your solar charge controller along with the positive tighten both down make sure they're nice and tight you don't want those coming loose because it's anywhere from 18 to 24 volts plug in your solar panel off your roof rack and now you have solar and it was a cloudy day so we we're only getting 0.7 amps but that's it good job you're ready to go camping get it oh i forgot we had a fridge we have to wire this up too now your fridge will have a 12 volt power supply that will not plug into anything you've just done. It just, it won't work. So you have to put in a 12 volt socket. This isn't too hard to wire up. Let me show you real quick. All you have to do is strip a wire, put connectors on it, and then plug it in. And just like everything else, red is positive, black is negative. I do recommend wrapping your positive in some electrical tape just so it's safe from jumping or arcing. Next, you want to take the positive of the other end, put it into your positive fuse block, take your negative, put it in your negative ground on your fuse block, take a 15 amp fuse, uh, struggle to fit it in the hole because you're doing it on camera and you're nervous, but eventually you'll get it. Good job. And now you should be pretty familiar with this at some point in your life. We're just going to take our 12 volt, you'll see it's lit up blue if you use the link in the description, plug that in, go check your fridge. It works. It all works. Last but not least, you want to plug in your battery monitor, check your pamphlet to see how to set up the desired amp hours for the percentages, depending on your battery size. And that's it. Now you have a battery in your cab and you have a fridge for camping. Perfect. Now you just put it all back together the same way you took it apart, just in reverse. It's really easy. It's only like three pieces, including the seat, but put your kick plate back and enjoy. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them please stay tuned we're going to have more of a diy fridge slide for cheap a snorkel and a dual battery system which i'm the only one i know with a dual battery system with the abs module so stay tuned for those thank you for watching peace out